Well, over the last couple of months, I've been experimenting with different options for an automation system. And I've been uh, experimenting with these little 433 megahertz relays. And they're kind of neat. And if you open them up, they basically have a receiver and a relay that handles up to 10 amps. Well, I kind of got the idea. Let's try and put one of these in one of these type switches here, which are, you know, the typical RV type wall switches. Well, one of the problems are, if you try to hook it to the back of this, you don't really have a lot of room. So I was able to have some panels made, and by extending the hole that you have to put this relay in the back into the wall, then that don't look too bad. However, since I started working on it, I came across some really cool relays. They're kind of the same thing, but this is how big they are. They're much, much smaller. And there's actually two types. This type has a MOSFET, and this type has a fairly small relay right here. Now this relay only handles about 1 amp, where this handles 10. So you're not going to power much with these. And this MOSFET is actually designed to handle more current, but they still recommend 1 amp or less because, you know, they didn't put a heat sink on it or anything. So I decided to try one of these. So I knocked the wires off and I just put a header on. And I had a little circuit board made. And this will fit right in here for that header like that. And I made provisions for a heavier duty relay which will handle 10 amps. So basically this MOSFET will turn the relay on and off and this will give me 10 amps. So I can drive several LEDs with this particular receiver board. Now since the receiver boards are small, you don't have the luxury of programming them like you do with these. With these, there's a little switch here that when you depress it, it allows you to program them. And you can program whether this relay is momentary, whether it's latching, or whether it uses channel A to turn on and channel B to turn off. Well, you have the same functionality here, except on the back side, you have to move a resistor from one side to the other and even though I have uh, quite a bit of experience these are much smaller than a 1206 resistor they're, they're like 603's I even have a little trouble from going from one to the other now these ship with latching so what I'm saying with that is with this is the remote that it comes with you push one and the relay closes you push the other and the relay opens so you don't have to change this but if you want to change it to momentary or if you want to change it to alternate so that you push this once, it turns on, you push this again, it turns off, you got to move the resistor. There's two little pads here that you need to short together, and you can short them together with a pair of tweezers or something like that. And you short those together to put the thing in the learn mode so it can learn new remotes. Where again, with these larger ones, you just push a button here and that allows you to learn the new remotes. So there are a couple of little limitations here that you got to work with, but otherwise, you know, these are going to be doable. And so when I built a circuit board, I put a status LED in here, and here is a spot for a larger relay, and I put a fuse in here, and on the bottom side I put a transit protection diode to keep power surges from burning out the LEDs. I found this specialty electronics hardware. This is a circuit board mounting version of a Quick Connect. And actually I put three of them on here. Well that gives you a really good way to mount this board. So we're going to mount the board like this. And so I'm going to go ahead and assemble this board. And when we're done I'll show you what it looks like. But this whole thing now can go into the hole. Now, the original switch for the lights is just simply on and off, and I changed this to a double pole single throw. So you have on, off, and on again. So if you're boondocking, you can turn the light on and off from the bottom, but if you're on shore power, you can turn the light on and off this way or this way. And this does not have a dimming function on here, but I didn't need one. You can buy brand A receiver and brand B or brand C transmitter 
and all you have to do is zero these out and reprogram them and you can program several transmitters to one receiver. The same thing goes for these little guys too. This is kind of a standalone beginning to my automation system. Eventually I'll have a 16 channel transmitter like this that'll handle 16 different devices. And also this little gem, it doesn't quite meet my needs yet, but this is a Wi-Fi, now get this, this is a Wi-Fi to relay bridge. So you can connect your smartphone to this, and the output of this is a transmitter that will operate these receivers. So from your smartphone, you can actually operate the receivers. Now the only problem with this is you have to have internet connection because you have to log in to their website for some reason uh, when you bring up your smartphone. Now I talked to the manufacturer and they said that they are actually looking at a non-internet version. So if that happens then you know we'll look into it again. But these are like 12, 14 bucks and if you're going to have internet access you could use it. And this also works with Amazon Alexa and uh, Google Assistant as well. And we finally have this unit fully assembled. Looks like a standard JR type switch except that it does have an LED here. And when we pull the cover, you'll see that the LED comes out, so you've got to be careful when you install them. But this is the back side. This is the 12 volt input, 12 volt output, and ground. So when you replace a switch, you take the two wires off the switch, put them here, and then we'll have to run an extra ground to the ground side. Now the only mistake I made on this board is I got the LED plus and minus incorrect, and I'll correct that on the production board. So like any other of my electronic projects, on the website you can order the circuit board and there's a full parts description that you can order and everything. And the beauty of this particular one is that there's no programming involved. You short these two pins out and keep it held down until this LED on the receiver comes on. Then you push the button that you want to program. When the LED starts blinking you let go and you're done. So it's pretty simple. Here is the light switch in our bedroom. Let's pull the cover, take a couple screws out. So for the ground connection I'm using one of these 3M locking three-way binder things. These work okay inside but they're not waterproof so I wouldn't use them in outside conditions. They're using connectors designed for quarter inch spade lugs and they're using them on 187 spade lugs so they don't make a very good contact. And what do they care? And you can see what I mean by the LED wires. So I'm just going to push that in. And so we're done. Now it's in the center position and the lights are off. If I put it in the low position, the lights come on just like they always did. And this is the position you'd use if you're going to boondock as well because the receiver and relay or nothing is energized. So if I turn it off again in the center, go to the top position. Now you see the lights still come on just like they did before. However, now the receiver is active and if I take the remote I can turn the lights on and off. So I can turn the lights on and off here. I turn the lights on and off here. But I cannot turn the lights on and off here when this switch is not on. It's not a true three-way. However, again, the overriding reason is for boondocking, and even this only takes a couple of milliamp years of current, they all add up when you have five or six or seven or eight relays. They can, at some point, start to be a significant discharge. So this project was kind of an easy little one. It's kind of the start of my automation system.